Hey everybody, all right, you are now looking at my BlackBerry 9900 from AT&T, which has the 7.1 OS operating system on it. It came with the 7.0, I think it was the, point, or the 239 bundle or something, and it's supposed to have battery problems. I don't know, if you look at my other video on how to get rid of the battery problems on the BlackBerry, that definitely worked, and uh, so there's really no reason to go to the 7.1, but it's supposed to give you a hotspot, which I, I really don't care about, and it's supposed to give you, uh, what else does it give you? It gives you Wi-Fi, it gives you Wi-Fi calling, which I don't know, even know if I need that, but, okay, so here's my cool, uh, my cool phone. Let me just walk you through some of the stuff that I did. It's really not that hard to do. What you need to do and I'm going to post this uh, in a link on the video, but what you need to do is you need to go to, try to get this on the screen so that you can read this thing. It's not going to be easy, but hit the pause button if you need to. Start writing this stuff down. That is the link. Slowly scroll across. That is the link that you need to go to. Like I said, I'm going to paste this link on the video so that everybody can uh, copy it down and go to it. All right, what you need to do is you got to go to this link. This is Blackberry's link. Now, let me explain a little bit to you. Yeah, there are a bunch of other websites that tell you what to do, so if you don't want to listen to this thing, that's cool. But uh, what you've got to do is you go over to the BlackBerry site, and you, I put in a fake name. You, get, you go to this link over here, and they say they want to verify who you are, so I put in a fake name, fake address, said I lived in the U.S., which I do. And, uh, and after that, it takes you to the download link, and you download the, uh, the file. Now, after you download that file, to you've got to do it on a PC. They do not allow Macs. Like I said, there are a whole bunch of videos that explain how to do this, but I'll just uh, explain what I did. It might make it a little easier. So what you do is you, down, you go to this website, you download... It's just like downloading any file. You download, uh, download this file. And after you get, all right, I'm going to go over and just, uh, I don't really want to hold this camera up, so let me just hold up this phone so you can look at nothing. All right, so what you do is you go to that link and you download that application file. That's really all, all it is, just a Windows application file. And you click on it, and then it runs you through your typical Windows installation of a program process. And it's like installing any other program on your PC. After you install that program, what you're going to have to do is go on your file manager and uh, click on Drive C. And then go over to Program Files. And then go over to, I think it's Common Files. Let me look really quick while I'm walking you through this. Okay, so you want to click on My Computer. And you want to go to Drive C. I'm doing it as we speak. Sorry about that. Because I want to give you good directions. It's very simple to do. It only took me like two or three hours. Because I was having a hell of a time getting this thing to work. But it's not that hard to do. All right, so you go to Drive C. You go to, take notes. Just take notes while you're listening to me go through this, this video. Go to Program Files. After you get to Program Files, click on Common Files. Common Files. And then, when you get to Common Files, you're going to want to go to uh, Research and Motion folder. After you get to that, go to the App Loader folder. App Loader. On the app lo in the App Loader folder, there is going to be a file called Vendor.xml. V-E-N dor.xml. Now you will find that one file in this folder if you are running Windows XP or a 32-bit version of Windows, I believe Windows uh, 7. What you might want to do is just go into uh, your, your uh, 
Windows thing, run button, do a search on vendor.xml, because if you're running Windows 7, there are going to be two of these files on your machine. One of them is going to be in the app loader folder. The other is going to be floating around somewhere. I don't know where it is. I'm not even going to look it up now. But just make sure that you do a search on vendor.xm as in Mary, L as in Lincoln. Delete both or one of those files if you only have one. And now let me give you an explanation of why you're doing that. I, I, I subscribe to AT&T. AT&T's phone is locked, so if I go to AT&T's website to do a download and an install, it makes sure that it's an AT&T phone, and it allows the install. Since this did not come out by AT&T, it came out by, I'll explain that in a minute, it came out by somebody else. If you try to do the install, it's not going to work. You've got to remove the vendor file. Now, the explanation is that RIM, the company that makes BlackBerry, <coughs> sorry, RIM, RIM does the, uh, the software. After they do the software, they get together with the uh, cell phone companies and they might want to add some extra junk in there. And so after, after they get the uh, software, they run some tests to make sure it works okay. And if it does, then they uh, put in the XML file and that becomes an install that you can work. Now, the whole catch is that you really do not have to use the AT&T or the, you don't have to use the install from uh, AT&T. And if you've got T-Mobile, and T-Mobile's got a, a download, but you don't have to use theirs. As long as you remove the vendor.xml file, everything should install. So, what you need to do now is you, uh, as I said, you do your install of the software, you go to the, one of the, you do the search, you go to those folders and you remove your vendor.xml file. After you do that, you might have to reboot your machine. Then you want to start your desktop, your, your uh, desktop manager software the, uh, that comes from RIM or you can download it and make sure you've got the latest version. And you want to start that uh, desktop manager software and then plug in your cable that goes from the USB of the PC to the, uh, your data cable that goes from the USB of the PC to the uh, cell phone. And after you do that, if things worked out right, then you're going to get something that says, found a local install on the machine. Do you want to install it? Now, my problem was that I didn't get anything, and that's because I had an older version, I, I had another uh, Blackberry, and it saw that software, so there were two vendor XML files on the drive, and I thought there was only one. Once I deleted both of the XML files, everything was fine, plugged in the cable, it said, you want to do the install, I clicked yes, um, and then you just leave everything alone. Okay, I'm going to put down the cell phone for a second. Let me uh, over here so you can see some cool video. All right, so um, you go and you install the phone, I mean you install the software, and the cell phone's going to boot up. Everything booted up fine with me, and the only problems that I had, everything was fine. It saw the, the, the phone number worked. The minute I started it up, well, let me explain. After I finished doing the install, it said was not able to install some database. Well, that was the uh, the Apps World software. I just ignored that um, and everything worked fine. I tried to register with Apps World. It didn't like whatever I was doing. It didn't like it. I went on the, uh, the RIM website. Hopefully you've done this before. If you haven't asked me, I'll give you the site for, uh, for setting that, for going to the RIM website and setting everything up. I went to the RIM website and it wanted me to revalidate all of my emails, which I did. I just clicked on, put in the password, and it sent the, uh, the messages to the cell phone saying that the email accounts were now working properly. And then, um, even though it said that the phone was registered, the device was registered, it really didn't see that, so I had to go back on the RIM web, well, on the same RIM, RIM site where you're doing the email, it says detect device, I clicked on detect device, it asked me to put in the PIN number, asked me to put in the IMEI number, 
Uh, two seconds later, I got a message saying phone was seen, phone was registered, and um, after that, I went over to Apps World, set up a new uh, a new account for Apps World. I don't know if it just did, if I was using the wrong password or I don't know what was going on, but it just didn't like it. So the whole process after I did it the right way after I deleted the vendor XML files. The whole thing took me about 20 minutes, 30 minutes at the most. Got uh, the uh, phone detected, got the email accounts set back up again. All the old settings were saved. That's one thing that you gotta, you gotta make sure you do when you, when you start the desktop uh, software. We'll say, do you wanna back up your uh, applications, your data? Yes, you definitely wanna do that because when it goes and reinstalls the new, so or when it installs the new uh, OS, it will load in all that stuff that it saved and all your settings, all your sounds. So um, hopefully this helps somebody. I know it seems kind of overwhelming, but it really isn't. Once you, uh, once you can get the desktop software to detect that you've got a 7.1 install on your hard drive, it is a quick and easy process. Hopefully this helps people. I take absolutely no responsibility whatsoever if you screw your phone up. Um, you shouldn't screw your phone up as long as you leave everything alone and let it do its install. And if you do mess up your phone, there is a way to, it's called bricking, if you brick the phone, which means that you can't do anything with it, there is a way to unbrick a phone that you screwed up and it's not that hard to do and then you can make everything work again. Or you can uh, reinstall your old OS and go from there. So if you don't understand any of this, if you don't know what you're doing, don't even attempt it. If you have some idea, if you've, if you've installed OS's before on here, if you just want to have fun and uh, get a newer software, go ahead. And like I said, from what I understand, it's no different. If you get AT&T, AT&T is going to, uh, AT, I don't know, AT&T will push out a, a fix when they come up with it. But I think they're like five months behind everybody else. So that's why I installed uh, this is Southwest Bell's install. That's the latest one, but it came from RIM's website, and that's what I wanted. There are others. T-Mobile's got one, and uh, Rogers Communication in the UK has one. So good luck on all this. Hopefully it works for you. And uh, if you like my video and you appreciate this stuff, leave a good comment. If you thought it, was, it sucked, well, then tell me that it sucked. See ya.